Hi there, and welcome to Spreadsheet Life Google Sheets Challenge number 10. In this video, I will be testing your skills working with dates and times in Google Sheets. And as with all of these videos, you can use the link in the description to download the workbook. That way you can attempt every question before you watch me do it. Now, if this sounds like a good time to you, then, well, let's get to it. Okie dokie. For your first question, you must calculate the total number of hours between the two times in decimal format. To pull off this calculation, start by selecting cell D5 and enter the following formula. Equals, open parentheses, C5 minus B5, close parentheses, multiplied by 24, and then press enter. And just like that, you get back the difference in hours. Now, why does this work? This works because times are simply stored as numbers within Google Sheets. For example, the time of 6 a.m. is equivalent to the numerical value of 0 0.25. Now, why is this the case? Why is 6 a.m. equal to 0 0.25? Well, Times in Google Sheets are simply fractions of a day, and one day in Google Sheets is equal to the value of 1. And so, if there are 24 hours in a day, and 6 a.m. represents 6 hours of that day, then when you divide 6 by 24, you get back the value of 0 0.25. And that is why 6 a.m. is equivalent to 0 0.25 in Google Sheets. Let's take a look at one more example. What about the time 6 p.m.? What would that be? Well, 6 p.m. represents 18 hours of the day. The first 12 hours bring you to 12 p.m. noon, and the next 6 bring you to 6 p.m., so 18 hours in total. And then, when you take 18 and divide it by 24, you get back 0 0.75 which is the numerical representation of 6 p.m. in Google Sheets. Hopefully, this is starting to click a little bit, and with all that knowledge in mind, hopefully the formula that we have here in cell D5 is starting to make a little more sense. We just take the two time values and subtract them from one another, and that gives us a decimal value. And so, to turn that decimal value into a number of hours, we simply have to multiply the value by 24. And that gives us the final number of hours between the two times. After covering all that, you can complete question 1 by using the fill handle to drag the formula down for all of the other times. Okie dokie. Now that we've got question 1 out of the way, let's move on to question number 2. For question number two, your goal is to calculate the date using the year, month, and day numbers that have been provided. To solve this question, you can simply use the date function. The date function takes the year, month, and day values and turns them into a final date value. So, selecting cell E5, enter the formula, equals, date function, then select B5 for the year value, select C5 for the month value, and select D5 for the day value. You can then close parentheses and press enter. And just like that, you get back the calculated date. You can now use the fill handle to copy the formula down for all of the remaining data. And that completes question number two. Let's move on to question number three. For question number three, your goal is to write two different formulas to calculate the end time by adding the hours and minutes to the start time. So, using what we know about times in Google Sheets, we can solve this problem by turning the hours and minutes into a time value or fraction of 24, and then we can simply add that value to the start time. So, let's look at the first way that we can do this. Selecting cell E5, we know that we need to add the hours with the minutes and then divide this value by 24 to get the appropriate time value. But before we move on, we need to convert the minutes to hours. 
and we can do this by dividing the minutes by 60, and that's because there are 60 minutes in every one hour. Okie dokie, everything looks good so far. Now we just need to add this calculated time value to the start time. So we add a plus, and then select the start time in cell B5. And just like that, we get back the end time using our first formula. Now what about the second formula? For the second formula, I propose using the time function to turn the hours and minutes into a time value rather than using simple math. So selecting cell F5, enter the formula, equals time function, and then select the hours in cell C5. Now for the second argument, select the minutes in cell D5, and finally enter a zero for the third argument of the time function. We enter a zero here because even though that there are no seconds, we cannot leave the third argument empty, and so we enter in a zero. After that, close parentheses to complete the time function, and then add a plus. Select cell B5, which contains the start time, and now, when we hit enter, we get back the calculated end time just like that. The time function converts the hours and minutes into a time value, and that value is added to the start time to give us back the final end time. Now, with the two formulas written, we can select cells E5 through F5, and then use the fill handle to copy the formula down for all of the remaining data. And that officially completes question number three. Let's move on to question number four. For question number four, your goal is to calculate the number of days between the start and end date. Also, you must exclude the listed holidays and all Saturdays. So basically, you are trying to count the number of workdays between the start and end date, and you must exclude the listed holidays and your only weekend day is Saturday instead of both Saturday and Sunday. Although this might sound like quite a tedious task, there is actually a function you can use to make this calculation very easy, and that is the networkdays.intl function. So in cell C8, enter the formula equals networkdays.intl function and then select the start date for the first argument. Then select the end date for the second argument. And for the third argument, you only want to consider Saturday as a weekend or a non-work day, and all of the other days as work days. So, enter in the value of 17 to force the function to only consider Saturdays as non-work days. And finally, for the fourth argument, select the holidays listed in E5 through E8. You can then close parentheses and hit enter. And just like that, you get the number of days between the start and end date, excluding the listed holidays as well as all of the Saturdays. And that officially completes question number four in your spreadsheet life Google Sheets challenge.